the Ned Rig. Everyone's raving about it on the smallmouth forums, and I've never tried it. So I thought, heck, maybe I should go out and buy some. <laughs> buy some? This is make you take it outdoors. I'm not gonna buy any. So I'm gonna show you how to make a mold and make your own Ned Rigs. Stay tuned. So what we're working with today is uh, spin cast silicone uh, mold rubber. And I had actually had this sent to me on accident. I had ordered 12 inch for an experiment I did. It failed, but I still had these left over. Um, and all I do is I'll lay the frame out, mark out my pieces, cut them out, and that's how I uh, use them in the mold. And you'll see that soon. Um, this stuff is it's soft and pliable. Um, it's fairly firm, so you have to push the lure in when you make the mold and everything. But what happens is under pressure in this frame, it heats up, kind of liquefies, forms around whatever you're molding. And then after a little bit of time, about an hour, the uh, rubber then becomes a lot more solid. Um, as you can see, this is real pliable. This is a, a mold and it gets a lot more stiff. You can't push into it. Where this here, I can dig my fingernail into. So, all right, to get this party started, we're gonna just take an eighth an ounce jig head here, put it in the vise and start filing. So I file down two of these now, and they stand up pretty straight. Um, using what I've got to file, it was hard to get a nice even uh, file down there, whatever you want to call that flat, but should work. Next, we're going to make a mold. So this is my mold frame. It is 1 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths, uh, made of aluminum. I got it on eBay for 20 bucks and it should last me forever. So first thing I got to do is put down some uh, mica powder on the base. And again, this base is just a piece of uh, round aluminum plate I had from my failed experiment at spin casting, but put down a good amount of mica, place that down. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is take a piece of, whoops, sorry. Uh, mold rubber that I cut from a uh, nine inch round spin casting piece of rubber and we're gonna put some mica on the bottom you can use talcum powder also uh, but I just happen to have the mica powder which is a, a good mold release for this and then the next one we're gonna put the uh, a smooth side down because we want this piece and that piece to uh, blend together, vulcanize together. So there we go. All right. So we have our first two pieces in. Next go in the uh, Ned Rig heads. So I've got them in the mold now, the two pieces. Um, what you have to do next is just push them firmly into the mold rubber. Hold on just a second. I forgot to do something. We don't want that sticking to the mold rubber, so we gotta put some mica powder in there. All right, so good amount of mica powder. Let's press it in there. Now I'm not putting a gate or anything like that into it yet. I'm gonna just cut those out with a X-Acto knife. Push the second one. You don't have to be too exacting also right now because this will all get compressed. Um, 
This is an acorn nut made for molds. It's a placeholder. Ah. Sorry, I'm trying not to bump the camera, which is right up against my right arm, so I'm doing this left-handed. And I am not left-handed. Push the acorn nuts in there nicely. Again, those are your placeholders. All right, so now you can see we got the two jigs, the Ned rig, and the acorn nuts. What comes next? You got it, another piece of mold rubber. That's the sound of me patting it down with some mica powder. We just put that in like that. Push it firmly in. Go ahead and get that started, the seating process. And then the next piece of mold rubber. Now, this one, you wanna put a smooth side down on that side without any talcum powder or mica powder because you want those two to uh, vulcanize together. So again, it's just all in there nicely. And there you have it. All right, last thing I do is I've cut out a piece of uh, aluminum and I'll place it on here like so. What that does just gives a little bit more thickness to add that pressure. I remember to vulcanize uh, this type of rubber, you need heat and pressure. So we're gonna put a little talcum, or why do I keep saying talcum powder? Mica powder on this. Like so. And now we put the top on. All right, so now we just get the top on there, another piece of aluminum. And drop the washers on. All right, as I was putting the washers on, I realized this bolt up here is the wrong bolt. It was a little bit long, so let's get these washers on. Washers are important because they help spread out the pressure even more. And then the dreaded wing nuts. All right, tightening up the wing nuts, just put the box wrench underneath, tighten down. Then I go to the opposite corner. And let's go to this corner now. and so on and so forth. Tighten it down as best I can. And in there you can see the uh, mold. And you can see there's just a slight gap in there so we know we've got a lot of pressure on that uh, rubber. Next thing is to uh, distract Stephanie so I can preheat the oven and put this in there. I'm gonna bake it for an hour at 350 in a preheated oven. And when we're done, we're gonna have a mold. Well, so much for distracting her and using the oven in the house. That's okay. I just got busted. All right, it's the toaster oven then. As you can see, it's tight squeeze. That's why I try to use the uh, home oven until Stephanie caught me. But uh, 350, go bake it for an hour. All right, so. Let's see what we got. That's still pretty warm, but looks like it's gonna be good. We'll wait for it to cool off a little bit more and we'll pop it out of the frame. We've given it time to cool off. And it's actually a 
And let's push it on through there. Okay, you can see it's got a separation line here. Oh, popped right apart. So, there you have it, a mold. Next, I gotta cut a spout to pour into. You can see the acorn nuts seated nicely. And they just hold the place like that. And uh, sorry for the traffic noise. But yeah, good to go. All right, so what I have to do is cut a narrow gate here and then expand it kind of like a funnel. So let's try that. This way, this way. I'm going to cut down a little bit deeper for the uh, big funnel, violating everything that you're supposed to do with knives and cutting towards myself. This is the first time I've ever done this, so here I'm learning right along with you. All right, so there's the first part, and that'll pour on down. And I'm going to let Stephanie put the camera down now, and I'm going to finish it up. I got the gates cut. Um, this is the first one I cut. It's a little narrow. I went broader on the other one to see which one will work better. When you uh, close up the mold, it's not exactly pretty, but it'll work. I'm going to pour it here pretty soon. I have to excuse the uh, traffic noise, but it's a little hot in here, so I'm trying to get a little breeze going. Well, that was kind of a bad pour, so I'm not expecting very good results. All right, it's solid now. I'll be darned. It didn't do too bad. Oh, let's see here. As you can see, the hooks I have are a little bit big. Hold on, come in focus here. And because of that i'm not getting a real good pour around these keepers but so far i'm pretty happy with it in the meantime i'm going to pour a couple more and uh i think i'll hit the river thanks for watching um, that was a learning experience for me, and hopefully you learned something also. Um, if you like videos like this, please hit subscribe. I'm really going to be trying to do some uh, great stuff and bringing you some great content. Uh, hit the little bell for notifications, and drop me a comment. Let me know exactly what you'd like to see in the future. In the meantime, tight lines.